Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to lecture number 7 of the course on statistics and probability. Students, aapko yaad hoga ke pichle lecture mein humne do bade interesting diagrams discuss kiye the. The stem and leaf plot and the dot plot. After that, I began the discussion of the concept of central tendency. And in that context, I discussed with you in some detail the concept of the mode. Today, I will continue with that concept and will discuss with you the non-modal as well as the bimodal situation. And after that, we will go on to other measures of central tendency. Aye, pehle hum us concept ki thodi si revision kar lete hain, jo humne last lecture ke end mein kiya tha. That is the computation of the mode in case of the frequency distribution of a continuous variable. You will recall that I used exactly the same example that we have been using for quite some time now and that of the EPA mileage ratings of cars and to that frequency distribution I applied the formula x hat is equal to L plus Fm minus F1 over Fm minus F1 plus Fm minus F2 into H where L and Fm, F1, F2 and H all had their particular meanings which I described and applying this formula we obtained x hat equal to 37.825 miles per gallon. Uske baad humne mode ki graphic location consider ki thi aur usi data ka jo frequency polygon tha uske upar yani uske x axis ke upar uh, mode ko locate kiya aur dekha ke it was lying exactly under the topmost point of the frequency polygon. Jaisa ke aapne dekha, humara jo mode hai is diagram mein um, x axis par us polygon ke niche center mein lie kar raha almost in the middle. Aur maine last time bhi aap se yehi kaha tha ke aksar obeshtar distributions chunke hump shaped hoti hain isi tarah se ke uska jo maximum point hai wo middle mein hota hai somewhat isliye the mode is regarded as a measure of central tendency let us consolidate this concept by going back to the example of the ages of the managers of child care centers that was considered in the last lecture the students will recall that the example was as follows. The following table contains the ages of 50 managers of child care centers in five cities of a developed country. The ages were 42, 26, 32 and so on. Convert this data into a frequency distribution and find the modal age. Now, students, you will recall that following the various steps involved in the construction of a frequency distribution, we obtained classes were 20 to 29, 30 to 39, 40 to 49, and so on. And the frequencies were 6, 18, 11, 11, 3, and 1. Now, in order to find the mode, we note that in this example, we are dealing with a continuous variable, that is age. Hence, the mode is obtained by the formula. X hat is equal to L plus Fm minus F1 over Fm minus F1 plus Fm minus F2 and this whole expression multiplied by h. Now, in order to apply this formula, the first step is the determination of the class boundaries because as you know, 
L stands for the lower class boundary of the modal class. And as indicated in the last lecture, the class boundaries for this example are 19.5 to 29.5, 29.5 to 39.5 and so on. The maximum frequency FM is 18 and it lies in the age group 30 to 39. Therefore, students, the class 30 to 39 is the modal class. And the lower boundary of this particular class is 29.5. In other words, L is equal to 29.5. Now, of course, FM has already been found, but we also need to determine F1 and F2. And going back to the table, we see that F1 is equal to 6 and F2 is equal to 11. Jaisa ke pehle bataya tha, F1 is the frequency of the class preceding the modal class and F2 the frequency of the class following the modal class. Now, the class interval of the modal class is 10 because 29.5 to 39.5 means that the interval is 10. Applying all these values that we have determined in the formula of the mode, the mode comes out to be 35.8. Hence, we conclude that in this particular sample of managers of the child care centers, the modal age, in other words, the most frequent age, can be regarded as 35.8 years. All right, let us now locate the mode on the graph of this particular frequency distribution. Students, you will recall that in lecture number four, we constructed the histogram of this distribution and it was, as you now see, on the screen. Also, the frequency polygon was, as you now see, and superimposing the frequency polygon on top of the histogram, we obtain this uh, rather interesting picture. But students, is waqt hum ye chaate hain ke hum is graph ke upar mode ko locate kare. As you know, the mode is a value of our variable x. Aur isi liye it is denoted by x hat. And in this particular example, because of the fact that x hat is, has come out to be 35.8, therefore, in this diagram, we locate this value on the x-axis. It is a point almost directly under the highest point of our frequency polygon. Please note that I said almost directly under. Is ki wajah ye hai ke jo frequency polygon aap dekh rahe hain. As you will recall, that is constructed by joining the points which are plotted against the midpoints of the various classes. Or agar hum is particular class ka midpoint uh, determine kare, the class which is the modal class, that midpoint is equal to 29.5 plus 39.5 over 2 and that is equal to 34.5. Lekin x hat jo humne is formula se determine kiya jo mene aapke saamne present kiya uske tehet x hat is equal to 35.8 which is somewhat to the right of 34.5. In fact, students, you should note that some statisticians even regard the midpoint of the modal class as the mode of that particular frequency distribution. But 
the formula that I have presented may be regarded as a better way of determining the accurate value of the mode. Students, the mode has some very desirable properties. It is easily understood, easily ascertained and also one very important point is that it is not affected by a few very high or very low values. Students, इस सिलसिले में जो इम्पोर्टेंट पॉइंट है वो ये है कि इन व्हाट व्हिच सिचुएशंस शुड वी यूज द मोड एक्चुअली इट इज अ वेरी वैल्यूएबल कॉन्सेप्ट इन सर्टेन सिचुएशंस एंड आई विल ट्राई टू एक्सप्लेन दिस पॉइंट विद द हेल्प ऑफ एन एग्जांपल सपोज दैट द मैनेजर ऑफ अ मेंस क्लोथिंग स्टोर इज आस्क्ड अबाउट द एवरेज साइज ऑफ हैट्स that are sold he will probably think not of the arithmetic or the geometric mean size or even the median size instead he will in all likelihood quote that particular size which is sold most often students this concept of the most frequent value is a far more use to a businessman than the arithmetic mean or the geometric mean the modal size of all clothing is the size which this businessman must stock in the greatest quantity and variety in comparison with any other size so aap dekhte hain ke inventory ke point of view se this particular concept is very significant and much more important than some other measures of central tendency which in some other situations may be very very important i said to you that i will also discuss with you the non modal and the bimodal situation kehne ka maqsad ye hai students ke baaz simple data sets mein n mumkin hai ke there is no mode because all the values are uh, occurring equally often aisa mumkin to hai especially if it is a small data set iske baraks you can also have situations when you have more than one mode and if you have two that will be called a bimodal situation and the graph will be as you now see on the screen students आपको खुशी होगी ये बात सुन के देर इज अ वेरी इजी मेथड ऑफ डिफ्रेंशिएटिंग बिटवीन यूनिमोडल एंड बाई मोडल सिचुएशन आपको पता है कि पाकिस्तानी कैमल जो है दैट हैज वन हम्प लेकिन जो चाइनीज कैमल है उसके दो हम्प्स होते हैं दैट्स इजी वे टू रिमेम्बर इट स्टूडेंट्स दिस ब्रिंग्स एस टू द एंड ऑफ द डिस्कशन रिगार्डिंग द मोड लेट इज नाउ बिगिन द डिस्कशन of the arithmetic mean that value which is numerically the most representative of a variable series of course as you know this is the most widely used average it is fairly in fact very easy to calculate and it is the most well accepted let us have its formal definition the arithmetic mean or simply the mean is a value obtained by dividing the sum of all the observations by their number in case of sample data the notation is x bar and x bar is equal to summation xi over n where i goes from 1 to n students ye jo notation hai sigma इससे तो आप वाकिफ ही होंगे दिस इज कैपिटल सिग्मा एंड इट डिनोट्स द सम इसके बरक्स स्मॉल सिग्मा जो है दैट डिनोट्स द स्टैंडर्ड डिविएशन विच वी विल बी डूइंग इन 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 एन एक्स लेक्चर इन दिस फॉर्मूला ऑफकोर्स एक्स आई रिप्रेजेंट्स द आईथ एक्स वैल्यू इन अदर वर्ड्स द आईथ वैल्यू ऑफ आवर डेटा सेट बट बट फॉर सिंप्लिसिटी we also many times write this formula as 
सिंपली सिग्मा एक्स ओवर एन यानी जो सबस्क्रिप्ट आई है उसको ड्रॉप कर दिया जाता है लेट मी नाउ एक्सप्लेन दिस कॉन्सेप्ट विद द हेल्प ऑफ अ सिंपल एग्जाम्पल सपोज दैट वी हैव इन्फॉर्मेशन रिगार्डिंग द रिसीट ऑफ अ न्यूज एजेंट फॉर सेवन डेज ऑफ अ पर्टिकुलर वीक एंड सपोज दैट द रिसीट आर नाइन पॉइंट नाइन जीरो पाउंड सेवन पॉइंट सेवन फाइव पाउंड नाइनटीन पॉइंट फाइव जीरो पाउंड एंड सो ऑन फॉर द सेवन डेज ऑफ द वीक एज यू सी ऑन द स्क्रीन इन ऑर्डर टू कम्प्यूट द मीन सेल्स पर डे ऑल वी हैव टू डू इज टू एड द सेवन वैल्यूज एंड डिवाइड बाई सेवन एंड डूइंग दैट आवर मीन सेल्स वैल्यू कम्स आउट टू बी थर्टी सेवन पॉइंट वन टू पाउंड स्टूडेंट्स लेट इज ट्राई टू इंटरप्रेट दिस रिजल्ट दिस वैल्यू थर्टी सेवन पॉइंट वन टू पाउंड स्टर्लिंग रिप्रेजेंट्स दैट अमाउंट विच वुड हैव बीन ऑप्टेन्ड इफ द सेम अमाउंट वॉज बींग ऑप्टेन्ड ऑन ईच डे स्टूडेंट्स जस्ट नाउ वी डिड द अरिथमेटिक मीन इन केस ऑफ रॉ डेटा फ्रीक्वेंसी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन के केस में हम अरिथमेटिक मीन को किस तरह से कंप्यूट करेंगे द पॉइंट टू अंडरस्टैंड हियर इज दैट इन केस ऑफ अ फ्रीक्वेंसी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन द आइडेंटिटी ऑफ द इंडिविजुअल ऑब्जर्वेशन इज लॉस्ट एज आई मैंशनड अर्लियर वॉट वी डू इज दैट वी अस्यूम दैट एवरी वैल्यू फॉलोइंग इन अ पर्टिक्युलर क्लास is equal to the midpoint of that class and using that midpoint we compute the arithmetic mean or the geometric mean or any other such measure the midpoint of any class is also called its class mark now if we have k classes in a frequency distribution of a continuous variable then our class marks will be x1 x2 and so on up to xk and the corresponding frequencies will be f1 f2 and so on up to fk using these values the formula for the arithmetic mean will be x bar equal to sigma fi xi over sigma fi where i goes from 1 to k it can also be written as x bar is equal to sigma fi xi over n the simple reason being that the sum of the frequencies is equal to n the total number of observations in our data set for simplicity we drop the subscript i and our formula is x bar is equal to sigma fx over n let us apply this formula to the same example that we are very fond of the epa mileage ratings of the cars in this example the midpoints of the classes as explained earlier will be found by adding the lower limit of any class to the upper limit of the class and dividing by 2 and doing so the midpoints are 31.45 34.45 37.45 and so on now in order to compute the arithmetic mean we first need to construct the column of fx yani x कॉलम की हर वैल्यू को f कॉलम की जो कॉरेस्पॉन्डिंग वैल्यू है उसके साथ मल्टीप्लाई कर दीजिए सो थर्टी वन पॉइंट फोर फाइव इन टू टू गिव अस सिक्सटी टू पॉइंट नाइन थर्टी फोर पॉइंट फोर फाइव इन टू फोर इज वन थर्टी सेवन पॉइंट एट एंड सो ऑन एडिंग द कॉलम ऑफ एफ एक्स वी ऑप्टेन 1135.5 and dividing by 30 our arithmetic mean comes out to be 37.85 
माइल्स पर गैलन और इस वैल्यू की इंटरप्रिटेशन क्या है दैट द एवरेज माइलेज ऑफ दीज कार्स टेस्टेड बाय द एनवायरमेंटल प्रोटेक्शन एजेंसी इज 37.85 माइल्स पर गैलन आपको याद होगा कि कुछ देर पहले हमने इसी एग्जाम्पल का मोड कंप्यूट किया था एंड दैट केम आउट टू बी 37.825 माइल्स पर गैलन आप देख रहे हैं कि फर्क बहुत थोड़ा है लेकिन बहरहाल एक फर्क है एंड दैट इज ऑब्वियस आफ्टर ऑल बोथ ऑफ दीज द मोड एंड द मीन दे आर टू डिफरेंट मेजर्स ऑफ सेंट्रल टेंडेंसी जब आपका फॉर्मूला ही डिफरेंट है तो ला मुहाला आपका आंसर थोड़ा बहुत मुख्तलिफ होगा स्टूडेंट्स यहां मैं आपके साथ एक बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट कॉन्सेप्ट डिस्कस करना चाहती हूं एंड दैट इज द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ ग्रुपिंग एरर ग्रुपिंग एरर अराइजेज बिकॉज ऑफ द फैक्ट दैट यू हैव अस्यूम्ड इन दिस कॉम्प्यूटेशन दैट all the values falling in a particular class are equal to the midpoint of that class zahir hai ki in reality to wo sari values jo kisi ek class mein fall kar rahi hoti hain uske midpoint ke barabar to nahi hoti but the moment you use the x values the class marks the midpoints in your computation of the mean you are introducing this error अब आपका जो आंसर आएगा दैट विल नॉट बी एग्जैक्टली द सेम एज द आंसर दैट यू वुड हैव गॉट बाय यूजिंग द रॉ डेटा लेट अस सी व्हाट वी हैव इन दिस वेरी एग्जांपल। यू विल रिकॉल दैट द माइलेज रेटिंग्स ऑफ द 30 कार्स वर 36.3, 30.1 and so on and adding these values and dividing by 30 the mean mileage rating comes out to be 37.82 students the difference between the true value of the mean that is 37.82 and the value of the mean that we obtain from the grouped data that is 37.85 as you can see it is actually very slight aur yahi wajah hai ke grouping error arithmetic mean ki computation mein zyada ahmiyat nahi rakhta experience has shown that in the computation of the arithmetic mean the grouping error is never serious but of course in the case of the standard deviation and in the case of some other quantities the grouping error can have quite a significant effect on our uh, answer students the arithmetic mean is the predominantly used measure of central tendency of a data set is example mein agar aap uske frequency polygon pe dobara nazar dale aur x axis pe arithmetic mean ko locate karne ki koshish kare to again you will find that it is lying in the center of the distribution not the exact center but more or less in the middle of the data set students the arithmetic mean has many desirable properties as i said earlier it is very easy to understand and to calculate and one of the very important points is that it is based on every single observation in our data set but the problem is that because of this fact that it is based on every value sometimes students this mean is distorted agar aapke data set mein jo values hain unme zyada fark nahi hai they are more or less the same उस केस में तो अरिथमेटिक मीन बहुत अप्रोप्रिएट है बट इफ देर आर अ फ्यू वेरी हाई और वेरी लो वैल्यूज इन योर डेटा सेट 
their effect would be to drag the arithmetic mean in their direction so that it no longer represents the bulk of the data what it is expected to do. Let me explain this point with the help of an example. Suppose one walks down the main street of a large city center and counts the number of floors in each building. Suppose the following answers are obtained 5, 4, 3, 4, 5, 4, 3, 4, 5, 20, 5, 6, 32, 8, and 27. Students, agar is data set ka arithmetic mean compute kare, to the answer is 9. But you should note that this is not at all a good representative of this data because 12 out of the 15 buildings that we have just counted, they have 6 floors or less. Yani 12 out of 15, a very high percentage of the data, the bulk of the data, un sab buildings mein to 6 ya usse kam floors hain, jabke hamara arithmetic mean ye keh raha hai, ke on the average, there are 9 floors per building. So this is exactly the way extreme values distort the arithmetic mean. In this example, the three skyscraper buildings have created a disproportionate effect on the arithmetic mean. Students, abhi humne arithmetic mean ka concept discuss kiya hai. Us arithmetic mean ka jise simple arithmetic mean kehte hain ya dusre labzo mein unweighted arithmetic mean. But then we have another very important concept and that is the weighted arithmetic mean. Bas situations mein hume jo hamari values hain unko weightage deni padti hai different weightage for every value depending on the situation and let me explain this to you now with the help of an example. Suppose that in a particular high school, there are 100 freshmen, 80 sophomores, 70 juniors, and 50 seniors. And also, suppose that on a given day, 15% of the freshmen, 5% of the sophomores, 10% of the juniors, and 2% of the seniors are absent. The problem is that what percentage of the students is absent in that school on that particular day on the whole. Agar hum in values ka simple arithmetic mean compute kare, to hamara jo answer aega, that will be incorrect. If we do compute the simple arithmetic mean of the four values that we have, we obtain 15 plus 5 plus 10 plus 2 over 4 equal to 8. Goya, hum ye keh rahe hain ke on the average, kisi bhi ek category of students mein, 8% of the students are absent. But actually, it's possible for us to find out why this calculation is incorrect. Aur mein aapke saath is cheez ko step by step discuss karungi. Jaisa ke aapne dekha, jo freshman ki category hai, us mein hamare paas 100 students hai. Un mein se 15% were absent. So this means that the total number of students absent from this category is 15. Iske baraks, jo sophomores ki category hai, us mein total number of students is 80 and 5% of them are absent, but that means that the total number of students who are absent in this category is only 4. Bilkul isi tara, 70 juniors me se agar 10% absent hain, to iska matlab hai ke 7 students absent hain, aur 50 seniors me se agar 
टू परसेंट एबसेंट है तो इसका मतलब है कि सिर्फ एक स्टूडेंट एबसेंट है इन दिस वे द टोटल नंबर ऑफ स्टूडेंट हु आर एबसेंट इन दिस स्कूल ऑन दैट पर्टिकुलर डे इज ट्वेंटी सेवन एंड इफ वी डिवाइड ट्वेंटी सेवन बाय द टोटल नंबर इन रोल्ड दैट इज थ्री हंड्रेड एंड मल्टीप्लाई बाय हंड्रेड द परसेंटेज कम्स आउट टू बी नाइन परसेंट आपने देखा था कि जब हमने अरिथमेटिक मीन सिंपल कंप्यूट किया तो हमारा आंसर था एट परसेंट एंड दैट वॉज रॉन्ग स्टूडेंट्स दिस ब्रिंग्स एस टू अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट ऑब्जर्वेशन और वो ये कि इस किस्म की सिचुएशन में जब हमारे नंबर ऑफ स्टूडेंट्स इनरोल्ड इन द वेरियस कैटेगरीज बराबर नहीं है वी कैन नॉट यूज द सिंपल मीन फॉर द एबसेंटीजम फिगर्स यानी हम उन एबसेंटीजम के फिगर्स को इक्वल वेटेज नहीं दे सकते वी हैव टू असाइन टू देम डिफरेंट वेट्स इन अकॉर्डेंस विद द ग्रुप साइज फॉर ईच वन ऑफ दोज कैटेगरीज इस एग्जाम्पल में ये जो ग्रुप साइजेज हैं दे आर एक्टिंग एज द वेट्स एंड वी नीड टू मल्टीप्लाई ईच वन ऑफ द एबसेंटीजम फिगर्स बाई दीज वेट्स इन ऑर्डर टू ऑप्टेन द करेक्ट आंसर द फॉर्मल फॉर्मूला फॉर द एरिथमेटिक मीन इज सिग्मा डब्ल्यू आई एक्स आई ओवर सिग्मा डब्ल्यू आई एंड अप्लाइंग इट इन दिस एग्जाम्पल वी ऑप्टेन सिग्मा डब्ल्यू आई एक्स आई इक्वल टू ट्वेंटी सेवन हंड्रेड एंड सिग्मा डब्ल्यू आई इक्वल टू थ्री हंड्रेड डिवाइडिंग ट्वेंटी सेवन हंड्रेड बाई थ्री हंड्रेड वी ऑप्टेन द वैल्यू नाइन एग्जैक्टली द सेम आंसर एज वॉट वी ऑप्टेन्ड अ शॉर्ट वाइल अगो एज द करेक्ट वैल्यू सो इट इज ऑब्वियस दैट देर आर सर्टन सिचुएशन वेर ऑल द एक्स वैल्यूज कैन नॉट बी रिगार्डेड एज बींग ऑफ इक्वल वेटेज and in that situation we modify the formula of the arithmetic mean and apply the formula of the weighted mean the next concept that i am going to pick up is that of the median let me explain this concept with the help of an example aapko yaad hoga abhi thodi der pehle humne wo example discuss kiya jisme humne नंबर ऑफ फ्लोर इन द बिल्डिंग्स की बात की और आपको यह भी याद होगा कि हमने देखा कि अरिथमेटिक मीन इट डिड नॉट रिप्रेजेंट द डेटा प्रॉपरली बिकॉज वेर एज ट्वेल्व आउट ऑफ फिफ्टीन ऑफ द बिल्डिंग्स हैड सिक्स फ्लोर और लेस आवर अरिथमेटिक मीन केम आउट टू बी नाइन फ्लोर इस सिचुएशन में द मीडियन मे कम टू आवर रेस्क्यू the median students is the middle value of a data set once we have arranged those values in either ascending or descending order in other words the median is defined as a value which divides a set of data into two halves one half comprising of observations greater than and the other half smaller than the median more precisely the median is a value at or below which 50% of the data lie students the median can be ascertained very easily in many situations and especially in the case of raw data going back to the same example that i just discussed the average number of floors in the buildings at the center of the city are 5 4 3 4 and so on and arranging these values in ascending order we obtain 3 3 4 4 4 4 and so on picking up the middle value we obtain the median x tilde equal to 5 आइए अब जरा इस वैल्यू को इंटरप्रेट करते हैं 
the median number of floors is five. Is ka matlab kya hai? Ke out of those 15 buildings, seven buildings have five floors or less and seven buildings have five floors or more. So that five is the middle value in that ordered data set. Students, jaisa ke maine ek se zyada martaba kaha, in this example, the arithmetic mean was distorted toward the few very high values. Lekin, median jo hai, jo hamara answer 5 hai is case mein, as you will all agree, this is much more representative of this data than the mean. Median ki yehi khususiyat hai, aur yehi iska advantage hai, ke agar aapke data set mein, कुछ एक्सट्रीम वैल्यूज एग्जिस्ट करती हैं तो मीडियन के ऊपर उनका कोई इफेक्ट नहीं होता सिंपली बिकॉज़ द मीडियन इज नॉट कंप्यूटेड बाय फॉर एग्जांपल एडिंग ऑल द वैल्यूज एंड डिवाइडिंग बाय द नंबर वो जो एक्सट्रीम वैल्यूज हैं वो तो उसमें इन्वॉल्व ही नहीं होती इट इज सिंपली द मिडिल वैल्यू लेट अस कंसीडर अनदर एग्जांपल Suppose that the retail price of uh, motor cars for several makes and sizes is available to us uh, and the values are uh, 415 pound sterling, 480, 525 and so on. In this data set, there are nine values in all and after having arranged them in ascending order, the median price comes out to be 719. Once again, you notice that it is very simple. All you had to do was to pick up the middle value. Problem thodi si vaha pe aapko aegi when you have an even number of values. Dekhe, agar aapke paas 8 values hai, to jo fourth value hai, that is not the middle value. Is liye ke fourth value se pehle Teen values hain or fourth value ke baad char values hain. Isi tarah if you say alright I'll pick up the fifth one, phir wohi problem hai. Ab fifth value se pehle char values hain or fifth value ke baad sirf teen values hain. So what do you do in this kind of a situation? What we do is to take the arithmetic mean of the two middle values. And I will explain this to you now with the help of the example that you now see on the screen. Suppose that the number of passengers traveling on a bus at six different times during a particular day were 4, 9, 14, 18, 23 and 47. Is me data, ye jo data hai, isko already arranged order me likha hai. Zaruri nahi hai ke ye isi tarah ordered ho. But because we want to compute the median, we have arranged it in ascending order. Now, you can see that there are two middle values, 14 and 18. Ye middle values is tarah se. Ke agar hum inko jointly dekhe, to in dono se pehle bhi do hi values hai. Or in dono ke baad bhi do hi values hain. Computing the arithmetic mean of the two, we obtain the median equal to 16 passengers. All the examples that we have done until now pertained to raw data. Um, what will we do if we have the case of a discrete frequency distribution? Let me explain this point with the help of an example. Suppose that we have the data regarding the number of pupils per class in some particular comprehensive school. Now, 23 students jo hain, aisi sirf ek class hai. Aisi koi class nahi hai, jisme 24 students ho. Isi tarah ek class hai, jisme 25 hain. 
But then we have three classes having 26 students each and similarly we can interpret the entire table. Ab point ye hai ke isi data ko agar hum raw data ki form me likhe to wo bilkul usi tarah se ek arranged data set a jayega jis tarah se hum abhi thodi der pehle discuss kar rahe the. In other words, in this case, this very frequency distribution converts to the raw data 23, 25, 26, 26, 26 and then 27 6 times, 28 9 times and so on. Total 45 values hain, and that is an odd number. So we don't have any such problem as uh, having two middle values. A 45 values ka jo middle hai, that is the 23rd value. Is liye ke 23rd value se pehle, you have 22. Or 23rd value ke baad, again you have 22. So you simply have to pick up the 23rd value and that is your median. Lekin agar maine is distribution ko dobara se raw data mein hi convert kar dena tha, to what's the fun? Uh, maine isko frequency distribution mein to is liye convert kiya tha hua hai na, ke mera raw data jo hai, wo ek concise form mein aa jaye. Maine ye point jo abhi aapko diya, ye sirf ye batane ke liye, ke even though it is concisely presented in the form of a discrete frequency distribution, our goal is to pick up the 23rd value and it is very easily achieved if we construct the column of cumulative frequencies as you now see on the screen. The cumulative frequencies are 1, 1, 2, 5, 11, 20, 28, 38 and 45. And the cumulative frequency 28 corresponds to the x value 29, whereas the cumulative frequency 20 corresponds to the x value 28. It is obvious that the 23rd value does not lie among the first 20, but it does lie among the first 28 and hence its x value is 29. Yani, wo jo teisvi observation hai, wo jo class hai, that contains 29 students. Uh, once again, how do we interpret this result? Ke wo jo pentalis classes hai us school mein, um, unke jo class sizes hai, Wo jo average value hai, average class size, that is 29. But average in what sense? Not in the modal sense, not in the arithmetic mean sense, but in the sense of the median. Ke agar hum un tamam classes ko ascending order mein arrange kar de, uh, based on the class size, so, Darmyan Wadi class jo hai, usme 29 students hai. 22 classes aisi hai, jinme 29 se kam hai, aur 22 hi classes aisi hai, jinme 29 se zyada hai. I think you will appreciate that the median is such a measure of central tendency in which this concept of center comes out very, very clearly. All right, now that we have discussed the mode, mean and median in considerable detail, students, let us consider another example that illustrates all three of these concepts. Displayed in the following table are the annual attendance figures in millions of visitors of 32 U.S. public zoological parks. The attendance figures are in millions 0 0.6, 0 0.9, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, 0 0.10, 0 0.11, 0 0.12
0.2 and so on. For these data, measures of location can yield such information as the average attendance for the zoos, the middle attendance figure and the most frequently occurring attendance figure. So, we would like to compute the mean, median and the mode for the attendance figures listed in the above table. Now, students, of course, the computation of the mean is very simple. All we have to do is to add all the values and divide by 32. And in this way, we obtain x bar is equal to 1.3 million. Now, as far as the computation of the median is concerned, the first step is to arrange the data in an ordered array and when we do that we have 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5 and after that 0 0.6 occurs 5 times and then we have 0 0.7 and so on. Now in order to compute the median the first point to be noted is that in this example, students, we are dealing with an even number of values that is 32. And you will recall that in the earlier discussion, it was mentioned that whenever we are dealing with an even number of values, we compute the average of the n by 2th and the n plus 2 by 2th values of the ordered data set. But students, here let me discuss with you another way of looking at this situation. As there are 32 values, we can say that the median is located at n plus 1 by 2th value and that is 16.5th value. Ab aap kahenge ke what do we mean by 16.5th value? Alright, by the 16.5th value we mean the value that is located halfway between the 16th value and the 17th value. Let me explain this point to you through the figure that you now have on the screen. Agar aap x axis yani real line per 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th values ko locate kare, to jaisa ke aap dekh rahe hai, the middle of the distance between the 16th and the 17th values can be regarded as the 16.5th value. In other words, by the 16.5th value, we will mean the average of the 16th value and the 17th value, which is exactly the same as what we have been considering earlier. After all, students, is not 16 exactly 32 over 2 and is not 17 exactly equal to 32 plus 2 over 2? Yani, we are still doing exactly the same thing. The average of the n by 2th value and the n plus 2 by 2th value. Alright, in this particular example, the 16th value is 1.0 and the 17th value is 1.1 and therefore finding their average the median comes out to be 1.05 million. Last but not the least we are interested in the computation of the mode. Now by inspecting the attendance figures we find that 0 0.6 is occurring 
5 times whereas all the other figures are occurring less often. Hence, the mode is equal to 0 0.6 million. So, what is the conclusion? The conclusion is that the mean or the average attendance at the zoos is 1.3 million. The median in other words, the middle attendance figure for these 32 zoos is 1.05 million and the mode that is the most frequently occurring attendance figure is 0 0.6 million. Students, in this lecture, we have the central tendency of three measures discussed kiye. We started with the mode which was actually a continuation of what we had started last time and then we went on to the arithmetic mean and also its modified version the weighted arithmetic mean. Lastly we have discussed the median and we have computed the median in case of raw data as well as in the case of the frequency distribution of a discrete variable. Jaisa ke aapne dekha, in tamam cases mein raw data or uh, discrete frequency distribution ke case mein median ki computation bohat hi asaan hai. Next time, I will discuss with you the computation of the median in case of the frequency distribution of a continuous variable. The same EPA mileage ratings example that we are extremely fond of. And we will see that in this situation mein we have a formula that will enable us to locate the median in case of a frequency distribution of a continuous variable. Also, I will discuss with you a very interesting concept and that is the empirical relationship between the mean, median and the mode. In the meantime, I would like to encourage you to attempt quite a few questions from the exercise of your textbook and also from many other books, as many as you can get hold of. And I wish you the best and Allah Hafiz.